What's up? I'm Troubleshoot in this relatively quick video. I'll be showing you how to set up the brand new WAN 2.1 video model. This is a brand new model that everyone's speaking about with apparently really good physics to it and an understanding of how things should move or at least look. So for the most part, as long as you have a powerful enough system, you can get something that looks relatively good. This over here is the WANXAI.com website where you can see some examples of what their models spit out. This model does need a pretty good system to run even the smallest 1.3 3B parameter model, and the videos that you can get out of it look relatively good. These, of course, are very well cherry picked, and probably many generations had to go into them. In order to get something looking like this, you'll need a pretty good system. That being said, in this video, I'll show you how to set this up on your own system at home and run it, assuming you have a good enough setup. If you'd like to find out how to use this in Comfy UI with more optimized models instead of the official WAN workflow, then you'll find a link to that video down below when I get around to it. But for now, Let's set this up We're using their official Gradio interface and show you how things work there. Let's do it. There's a 1.3 billion parameter text to video model, which I'll be showing you here. If you'd like to run one of the bigger models to get a much better looking video, 480p, 720p, you'll need a much more powerful system to get these done. While you can use smaller graphics cards and the extra VRAM requirement is shifted to your normal RAM, it is gonna run a lot slower. That being said, this video will show you how to get the official normal flat default models working on your system with the Gradio or default web interface that can be downloaded completely for free from the WAN video GitHub page. If you don't have a powerful PC to run this on and you don't want to pay for a cloud service to do it, use this over here, which you'll find linked down below, WAN 2.1 on Hugging Face, where you're able to interact with this completely for free using Hugging Face's compute power. You'll be able to use text to video or image to video, both of which can be done using the completely free method that I'm showing you here in just a moment on your own system at home. That being said, while you can technically install this on Windows, I at least had a serious issue while installing it as you need to install the Python package Flash Attention. This package is pretty notorious in that building it is quite literally gonna take you multiple hours two hours, nine hours, one and a half hours, etc. And for the most part, you're just wasting your time setting this up on Windows, at least in its current state. If you are gonna be using it on Windows, use WSL, and that's what I'll be showing you here. So this is technically a Linux tutorial. If you don't already have WSL installed, you'll find a link down below that should show you exactly how to get started. My WSL installation is just a normal default Ubuntu setup, as you can see here. So let's begin. In order to download and set this up and use inference either on the command line or preferably on the Gradio web interface, which is very similar to this one here for either the small model or the larger image to video models, which are these ones over here, instead of the text to video models, which are these two, then you'll need to first of all, clone this repository to your system, install the requirements and start it up. To do so, click code followed by HTTPS and copy this over here. Now, as this is a Linux guide, you should already have a Git install. So just a Git clone, space the link, and hit enter to download the latest version. Then CD into capital W, hit tab, WAN 2.1, and inside of this folder, you should see all of the same files from the GitHub page over here. To start your install, I'd recommend using Conda. If you don't have Miniconda or Anaconda installed, then head to the next link down below to download and install Miniconda. Head across to the Linux tab over here and copy this text over here. So copy and paste it in. This will run multiple commands. So just wait for all of them to finish. Then when it's done, Conda should be downloaded and partially set up. Use the next command over here to activate it as such, then use this command to initialize it on all available shells. So bash, zish, etc. Paste it in and wait for it to finish. Now, when you restart bash or log in again, you'll see we currently have the base conda set up. Sweet. To start installing this, we'll need to first create a new conda environment, which we can do with this command. This will create a Python 3.11 environment, simply called wan, and it'll activate it. 
So we'll wait for this to finish. And assuming I didn't typo that, it'll be fixed in the description. It should activate as WAN. Now we'll need to install the tools to build it, which you can see here are GCC Linux 64 and GXX Linux 64. You may already have these installed, so we'll need to wait for this to finish. And once it's done, we can skip straight to installing CUDA using conda install CUDA hyphen C NVIDIA. We'll wait for this to finish. It'll be around a gig download to download and install. And once it's done, we can use the next command to install PyTorch. This will install the latest version of PyTorch. You can use previous or different versions if you wish, but I'll just be using the latest 126 version. Once this is done, we can install the actual project using pip install r requirements.txt. We'll need to wait for this to finish. At this point on Windows, you're probably seeing a bunch of different errors, which is what made me give up there. Not to mention flash attention, which as you can see is installing normally, but it was finished in no time simply because it did have to build on my system. Instead, it was just downloaded as a pre-built file and applied. On Windows, it needs to build from scratch, which takes multiple hours. Anyways, once it's done installing, we can install the Hugging Face Hub, which we'll be using to download actual models. Then use Hugging Face CLI login to log into Hugging Face. Simply control click this over here to open it in your browser, sign in. If you haven't got an account, create one, and then use create new token, followed by a read at the very top and just give it the name WAN or something similar. Create your token, then click copy and choose done. Use control V to paste the token here, hit enter, Y, enter, and then it should be done even if you get an error like this. That's fine, as we're not pushing to the Hugging Face hub. We can clear, and now we can use Hugging Face CLI download, followed by one of the models here. I'll be using the much smaller text to video 1.3 billion parameter model. So I'll copy this name, space, paste it in here, and we'll add the command local hyphen dir, followed by a dot slash WAN 2.1 text to video or image to video, whatever you're downloading, followed by the detail of it. So in my case, hyphen 1.3b. This is going to take some time to download as it's around a 12 gig download even for the smallest model. The other models are way bigger and will take much longer as well. Once it's done, we can finally get to actually starting the thing up. So heading back to the GitHub page for WAN 2.1, scrolling all the way down to run text to video generation, as that's what I've downloaded, we can scroll down to running local gradio. Here we've got the command we need to copy. Keep in mind, if you're trying to use image to video, scroll down to run image to video generation, followed by using these gradio commands over here. This dash API key, I'm pretty sure is some kind of cloud compute, just copy from Python all the way to the very end over here and use that command instead. You've got a 480p, 720p, or a combination model over here. Just keep in mind, you'll need to download these different models as you see fit, of course. CD into the Gradio folder and paste in the command. Just make sure it points to the correct version. As you can see, it says text to video 14B. Meanwhile, I downloaded the 1.3B version. And as it's not in this Gradio folder, I suppose we could have downloaded it here. We'll need to add another dot before dot slash to go up a folder to find the correct place for the model. Hit enter and wait for any missing files to be downloaded. And finally, once it's done downloading, you can open this link over here to connect to it in your browser. Just a quick note, you may need to change these four zeros to 127.0.0.1 if you see it like this. We can choose English here and enter a prompt. So let's say a panda floating in space. Now, usually when I use the prompt enhance button here, it runs out of memory and gives me an issue. So for now, I'll just leave the prompt as is. Then we can change the resolution. I'll drop this to either 480 by 832 or 832 by 480 for vertical instead of horizontal. I'll choose horizontal and we'll let it go. In a couple of minutes, we should have a few seconds of actual video. Pretty cool. If you wish to customize this further than what you have here, you're probably going to need to use this command instead to just generate an image out of your console. So essentially, Python generate text to video followed by your model, in my case, 1.3b size. So it'll be 640 by 480, for example, checkpoint directory, change that to 
prompt, inside of a double quotes, you'll enter your entire prompt. You can use prompt extend, which is that enhance button, prompt method, and finally language chain, change this to en instead of ch for English. So there we go, I just had to cd dot dot slash, then run that command with that extra CPU thing, and the video was able to generate. This took a very long time, but let's have a look what this looks like. Here you go, it's a panda swimming. So that's the thing. Obviously, the videos that you saw were cherry picked, and this, of course, is the much smaller model. So the results aren't the best. But if you're interested in running it, now you know how. It's just not that simple if you're not running a crazy kid system. So while it is breaking new records and things like that, it's okay, but it's not crazy. Anyways, that's really it. Hopefully you found this video at least somewhat useful, if not educational, as, well, I don't think so many people are going to be trying this out if it's just okay or at least requires crazy hardware to run at home. But anyways, that's really it for this quick guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.